Hi, I'm Daniel Eid and welcome to Hoop Scoop on Gaze TV. Round 17 for you this week, our second game. It's the Melbourne Tigers hosting the Perth Wildcats. News out of the Tigers camp, Tommy Greer and Nathan Croswell will both start tonight for the home team. Let's have a look at the game preview. The Melbourne Tigers are led by Ebi Arar and he's 20.9 points per game. The Perth Wildcats are led by Sean Redditch, who averages 19.1 on the season. Last Friday, the Perth Wildcats dropped a shocker at home to the Cairns Taipans, 81 to 77. Coming up next, it's Ebi Arar and the Melbourne Tigers taking on Sean Redditch and the Perth Wildcats. Here are the highlights. It was raining triples from the Melbourne Tigers to open proceedings as the revamped starting lineup ventured to the outside, nailing six Trey Puntes in the first six and a half minutes as the home team shot out of the blocks to grab a 31 to 23 lead at the first break. With the introduction of Luke Kendall into the outfit, the Tigers didn't skip a beat as their new recruit mixed it up on the outside and the inside as Melbourne grabbed a 44 to 31 lead. The visiting Perth Wildcats found a way to put points on the board as Alex Lowton landed three in a row from behind the arc in the space of 73 seconds to hit the Tigers with some scoreboard pressure. And when Paul Rogers scored on the inside with a fraction of two minutes before half time, the deficit was down to five. But Ebi Arar would give Melbourne some breathing room before the intermission, dropping one at close range before stepping outside to drain a huge three. The Tigers up 59 to 52 at the first half. The second half opened with Sean Redditch pulling the Wildcats closer. And when he sunk one from deep, the Tigers lead had been slashed down to a single field goal. Melbourne answered back through Ebi Arar, who knocked down the jumper and then cleaned the glass for two more before picking a pocket and coasting away for the damage, plus one. Hanging around, Perth cut back into the lead as Darnell Hinson dropped a clutch three and then Rogers went back to work down low to score late in the period, but Perth still trailed 76 to 68 at the final break. With his toes on St Kilda Beach, Hinson landed a big three to open the final stanza and the lead was down to five. The Tigers then stood up to the challenge as Stephen Hall landed one long bomb and then scored a deuce. Before Kendall got going again with a two and followed it up with a three. And when David Barlow joined the scoring fiesta, capping off a 20 to zip run. Moments later, rubbing salt into the wound, the Tigers had blown this baby out. Barlow left to slam the game shut as the Tigers ended up crushing the Wildcats to win 108 to 81. Here we are with Luke Kendall. Luke, your first game with the Tigers, but it looked like you played with this team for years. Yeah, and no, I've, I've played against it a lot during juniors and uh, obviously during the finals last year and uh, like the past four seasons, so I kind of know what they run. Just kind of know the ins and outs, and uh, yeah, it was, it's good to play with good guys around you, with Barlow and Anstey and, and DT and Ebby, so it's, yeah, it's a really good feeling. After, Mel after people have been saying Melbourne have been struggling, do you feel any pressure on you coming to this team as maybe the missing link? There's always pressure on defending champs no matter who you play for. If you win the championship, everyone expects a lot of you, and especially we've got some big-time players in this team with Anstey and uh, Ebi and Barlow, so um, there's always a lot of pressure, but that's good heading into the finals because you've played all those pressure games, so hopefully we'll get some pressure basketball and finals basketball you know, coming down the back stretch, and we get used to it, so we've got a good run into the finals. Thanks, Luke. Good luck for the rest of the season, mate. Have a good one. Here we are after the game with Nigel Purchase. Nigel, Melbourne, nothing to fear. Dave Thomas is here. Well, I've always said that Dave Thomas was going to be a lifer with the Melbourne Tigers. I was surprised that he went to Cairns and the Tigers didn't re-sign him. But uh, he's come home to roost and he's a very popular player with the fans. I'm sure he's very popular with the owner, Seamus McPeak, right now, and also Alan Westover and his teammates. But he is a bit of the missing link, Dave Thomas. That's all the one percenters. And um, I think the Tigers have a real chance to go close to winning it this year now. Um, is it just a coincidence that every time Ebi Arar has a big game, the Melbourne Tigers look fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. Is, it, is, that, is that the case? But uh, I guess you're talking about EB um, with his scoring. But he did play well. And I think that if all the Tigers are performing well, it opens the game up for EB. So um, he's a fantastic player to watch. And some of those moves tonight were just really, really, really fantastic. And uh, once again, he's another very important piece of this puzzle. And they need him firing if they're a chance to win it. 
Now, with every spare breath you have, you talk the Perth Wildcats up. Yeah. They're now on the brink of falling out of the playoffs. Nigel, what's the excuse? I'm, I'm not sure what their excuse is. I think they're underperforming, but um, Sean Redditch was out of sorts tonight, and um, there's, there seems to be a lot of pressure on the guys with the Perth Wildcats, and uh, maybe that pressure is getting to them. I'd like to think that they could play better than that because I think the league's healthier when uh, all teams are playing to their ability. But for me, Perth are, vi are very much underperforming, but I still think they're a chance to make the six and play a role in the finals. Connor Henry, even though it's late in the season, is his job safe? Oh, I would think so. I'd be surprised if Andrew Vlahoff made any changes uh, between now and the end of the year. Uh, he's doing a reasonable job, and uh, but it's up to him to get the players firing on all four cylinders. And keeping in mind that Paul Rogers played his first game back for the Wildcats tonight as well, so he needs to fit into the rotation also. And one final thing, one day will Dave Thomas's singlet hang from the rafters? Dave Thomas' singlet? Jeez, I don't know. That's a tough question, but there's a lot of other Melbourne Tigers players that were around before the ones that are up there now. Maybe they need to be considered as well, and uh, well, Lindsay Gaze and those sort of guys should be considered. But Dave Thomas, for me, has been a, a pivotal player in the last two titles for the, uh, the Melbourne Tigers. He might just be the, uh, the missing link in this year's title as well. Who knows? Well, I'll take that as Nigel Meaning. He thinks his singlet should be up in the rafters. <laughs> for what it's worth, I think Dave Thomas will have his singlet retired. And we'll catch you now with the guys in the press conference. Well, Connor, that was um, pretty disappointing. What's that one? Yep. What do you think went wrong? <clears throat> well, all you have to do is look at the stats to understand that uh, any time you turn the ball over 25 times and give up 21 offensive rebounds, uh, you give your opponent uh, the win 